So up until now, you've learned a bunch of different skills when it comes to programming C Sharp, but we haven't really done any sort of project in order to illustrate that we actually know how to build something using C Sharp. So within the next couple of episodes, I plan to do a small assignment that I'm going to give you guys. And then I want you to try and solve it yourself and then send it to me. And then maybe the episode after, depending on how many people are actually sending me things, um, I will present a couple of different of the solutions that you guys sent me in order to get the solution to this specific project here. But before we get to this assignment that I'm going to give you within the next couple of lessons, I do want to teach you just a few more things that you need to know in order to actually be able to solve this assignment. So the first thing we're going to talk about today, which might be a little bit prematurely taught, but I think it is something that you might as well just learn by now, which is something called conditional statements. Now, when it comes to C Sharp, we sometimes want to do something or run a specific piece of code, depending on what kind of data we have inside our application. So let's say we have a console that's running on the screen right now. And I want the user to type in something, maybe they need to write um, their name, or maybe they need to give me a couple of numbers or something in order to do something with this application, then I need to take whatever they write and store that inside my application. So depending on what they write, we might want to do something with this data that they gave me. And we use conditional statements in order to do this. So to give an example here, let's say we have a user that gave us some kind of data. Let's go ahead and create a int variable type. And I'm just gonna call this one num. And I'm going to just set this one equal to something like uh, one, just to have some kind of number here. Now, depending on what num is equal to, I might want to run a specific piece of code. And do bear in mind that we're pretending right now, we're pretending that this specific number here was given to me by the user inside this console application. So if the user gave me a number, I want to run a conditional statement that is going to check what is this specific number he gave me or she gave me, and then do something based on that number. So I can do what is called an if statement, which we create by using the if keyword, then parentheses, curly brackets, and then inside the curly brackets, we're going to include the code that will only get run if whatever's inside the parentheses is true. So if I were to run a console dot write line and just say something like, uh, let's go ahead and run a string their answer was one exclamation mark. Now what I can do here is I can run this piece of code if whatever is inside the parentheses is true, meaning that right now I'm checking is num equal to one. Now this might seem a bit familiar to you because in a previous episode we did talk about operators. And one of the operators that we talked about is what we just did here inside the parentheses, which is a comparison operator, we compared num to one to check if they were the same thing. Now do bear in mind, just as a refresher, if I were to do this and just say num equal to one, that I'm assigning one to num. I am not checking if they're the same thing. So if we were to go back again and do two equal signs like this, I am right now checking is num equal to one, which in this case it is. So this is going to be true. And then we'll go ahead and run this statement in here. So we're to run this inside the console application. Just gonna run it here. Drag it over, you can actually see we get the answer was one. Now what if this if statement is not true? And we want to run another check after this one that is going to be a direct follow up as part of this if statement here, then we can do what is called an else if statement. So I'm going to say else if parentheses, curly brackets, right after my if statement, that's important. And what happens here is that it's going to check is num equal to one. If we were to change it up here and say that the user typed in two, then the first if statement is not going to be true. It is going to be false, meaning that it's not going to run this line of code down here. Instead, it is going to jump to the next statement if I do actually have an else if or an else statement. And it's going to go ahead and do a check down here instead. So what I can do in here is I can go ahead and check for something else. I can say is num equal to two, which in this case it is. And then I'm gonna go ahead and run another console right line here. I'm just gonna say the answer was two. 
And if we were to actually run this, we should get the answer was two because right now num1 is in fact equal to two. So if we were to run this, you can actually get, get the answer was two. Now, if I were to say, okay, so I have a bunch of these if else if statements here, and we can actually go and combine even more of these after each other. So I can actually say we have another else if statement where I check for if the number is three, or we can also say if it's lesser than or equal to or something, depends on what you want to do here. Then I can go ahead and just keep adding else if statements afterwards in order to check for something else. And this is something we can just keep doing. Do bear in mind that if one of these do actually end up being true, let's say a word to say, well, right now int num is equal to two. The second statement here is going to be true, meaning that it's going to stop this line of conditional statements and it's not going to run this uh, other else if statement we have down here because we do actually have one that is true. So it does actually stop in the chain of statements when we do hit a true statement. Uh, what we can also do here is if I were to say, okay, what if I want to give the user some kind of code or run some code if none of these end up being true? Then we can write what is called an else statement. So I can say else curly brackets. And what you'll notice here is that we don't have any parentheses and that's because we don't need to check for something. This is just going to run if none of these end up being true. So this is kind of a fail safe to say that, uh, that it's going to run if we do actually end up getting an error or uh, we do want to have one of these statements running, but it doesn't. So we give out an error message or something. So what I can do here is I can actually copy my console right line, paste it down here. Let's actually change this one to three because that would make sense. And I can instead say there was no answer or something. There was an error, we could say, maybe. Depends on what you want to write in here. Uh, what we can do then is if I were to go ahead and say, well, let's just go ahead and run this again with the answer being two, because you'll actually notice that it does actually come out as the answer was two. But if I were to change this to something that we don't have inside one of the if or else if statements, like 10, and then go ahead and run this, you'll actually notice that we get there was no answer because it is running this last statement down here because none of these ended up being true. And do also notice that when we did actually get the answer was two previously, it did not run this else if statement down here either. We could actually uh, go ahead and check for, let's go ahead and create a second variable here just to sort of test this out for you. Let's go ahead and make this one two. And then the second number here is going to be equal to 10. Then down in the else if statement we have down here, I can actually check num2, is it equal to 10? So right now we have this one being true and we have this one being true. So if it does not stop, it is going to write up two answers inside the console. Let's go ahead and run this. And it'll actually notice that we only get one answer, we get the answer was two, because like I said, it stops running the conditions if one of them actually ends up being true. So it doesn't run whatever is below here because this one up here is true. So this is what we call a conditional statement and you will be using this constantly when you create console applications because this is a great way to check data and then run specific code depending on what kind of data you have. So this is something you need to know before we get into this exercise that we're going to enter. So that's all I want to teach in this episode here. Thank you for watching and in the next episode, we're just going to do a few more things that you need to know before we get into the actual assignment that I'm going to give you. And after that one, we should be ready for the assignment. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.